Hey guys, one of six, the time to this. Gonna keep things short since the last time I ran out of time. So, astronomy budget. Talking, I'm talking about the sun. Big flaming ball of death in the center of our solar system. So, how was the sun created? Well, back in the beginning, before the sun existed, there was a whole bunch of gas in the universe, and a whole bunch of energy waves came along, pushed it together into a little clump. A little clump. Which, grew, which gained gravity because it existed, which pulled in more gas, more gas, more gas. It became a protostar. I don't know what exactly a protostar is, but it's not an actual star. It's not what we have today. It took 50 million years for the sun to mature from a protostar into what we have. It's a big, giant, flaming ball of death. Talking about big, giant, flaming ball of death, what is the mass and diameter of the sun? Well, the sun... The mass is 1,989,000,000 octillion kilograms. You probably don't know what a nonillion is. You might know what an octillion is. Let's say million is one, billion is two, trillion is three. Nonillion is nine. That's a lot of zeros. What about the diameter of the sun? Because I'm supposed to answer that too. <coughs> Excuse me. The diameter of the sun is 864,575.9 somethings. I forgot to put the units. It's probably like miles or kilometers, something like that. Kilometers, however you want to say it. You could fit 1.3 million Earths into the sun. It's really, it's really big. How much energy does the sun burn? It burns 1.367 thousand watts per second. That's enough to power 2,880 trillion light bulbs. We should just connect our power grid up to the sun. Sure, it would melt. Sure, it would fly our grids, but it'd be worth it for like half a second. Now, how does the sun compare to other stars? It's fairly average. It's not very big or very small compared to other stars. It's not very hot or very cold compared to other stars. Compared to us, it's very big, it's very hot. How old is the sun estimated to be? Sorry, I'm rushing through this. So, the sun, scientists did a bunch of math based off of other yellow dwarf stars, which is what our sun is classified as. <coughs> Excuse me, thanks. Is what our sun is classified as the yellow dwarf star. Scientists did a bunch of math and decided that it is 4.603 billion years old. It's old, older than your grandpa. How long will the sun last? Scientists did a whole bunch more math based on other yellow dwarf stars again. It's estimated that it'll last five billion years because of how much hydrogen is in it. <coughs> Yikes, I got something stuck in my throat. Something pointy. Like food. So, and so, because how much hydrogen, we'll talk about why the hydrogen is important in a second, but once it runs out, it'll explode into a red giant star, a very big star, and it'll become so big that it'll consume the Earth, and then it'll shrink back down into a white dwarf, a very small star, and we'll all be dead. So, how does the sun create heat, slash light, slash energy? What's its power source? It, creates energy through hydrogen fusion. Pretty much, the gravity is so great at the center that it forces hydrogen molecules together, releasing a whole bunch of heat and energy, which is what makes the sun the giant flaming ball of death that it is. And that's why it'll run out, because once it runs out of hydrogen, it'll switch to helium, the second most common material in the sun. Or so we think, we can't be sure. <coughs> the sun doesn't, the helium doesn't work the same as the hydrogen. The helium will instead just heat up a lot, which will emit heat and energy, but it'll also cause the sun to get really big. It'll swallow up the earth, we'll all be dead. Now, inner parts of the sun. The earth has four parts, the inner core, the, the outer core, the mantle, the crust. The sun, likewise, has three parts the core, the radiation zone, and the convection zone. The core is where the hydrogen fusion actually takes place. That's where the pressure is so great that it forces stuff together and causes 
boom, boom, kapow. The radiative zone is where energy goes through. That's really all it does. Now, it's interesting how the energy goes through. It's called the random walk because the energy latches onto one particle. It shoots off, latches onto another, shoots off, latches onto another in a seemingly random path. And it takes really long to get through because of that. So, and then the outer zone is the convection zone. The heat moves through convection, which is what causes the bubbling and movement. Now, the surface and the exterior of the sun, plus other cool stuff. The surface of the sun is called the photosphere. It's not actually solid. Don't think that you can go stand on the sun. You can't. You'll be sucked into the center of the sun and turn into spaghetti. Kind of like with the black hole. Well, at least that would have seen itself, because gravity. <laughs> the lower part of the sun's atmosphere is the chromosphere. It appears red when viewed during a solar eclipse. It's that thing around the moon. It's the thing that makes you go blind. Don't look at it, kids. You'll go blind. It's called the chromosphere because, you know, the color, chroma. Now, the outer part of the atmosphere is the corona. And surprisingly, it's a lot harder than the surface. We're not exactly sure why, and I don't remember today exactly, so I'm not going to waste time trying to guess what it is. Now, now, sunspot. Now, again, I need to get, go on a bit of tangent to explain this. A sunspot is a cooler part of the surface. Why does this happen? Well, the sun has a magnetic field just like us, except because of the rotation of the sun, because the sun rotates at different speeds at different places along its axis, that magnetic field gets tangled up and eventually gets pulled out to the surface. And so you'll have a loop of the, the sun's magnetic field just going out of the surface. And a whole bunch of particles and energy and whatnot will go along that path, causing, causing something called a solar prominence. But that also sucks the heat away from the surface of the sun, causing that cooler, darker spot. Solar prominence, it's that cool flame loop that I literally just talked about. Now, there's something called a coronal mass ejection, and that is also caused by that exact same magnetic field. Those two ends of the magnetic field, positive and negative, eventually get so twisted up that they cross over and get cut off, spitting a whole bunch of deadly particles out into the universe which can hit us. It can fry our electric goods if it hits the earth under the right conditions. It can radiate astronauts, so if there's any astronauts out there, they're probably going to mutate because of radiation. And it causes the aurora borealis and the aurora Australia, Alice. Now there's also one more thing, the solar flare. It's, I don't think it's caused by magnetic field. It's just like a big pillar of flame, just boom, lots of fire and plasma, spit it out into the universe so that everybody can die. And I'm not encouraging death, I'm just saying. Giant big fiery ball of death, what else do you expect me to say? Solar flare is an intense burst of radiation from the sun. It's kind of like a coronal mass ejection, except it isn't. Now, why is this giant flaming ball of death important? Well, it heats the planet. It provides light so that we can actually see. If the sun didn't exist, we couldn't see because there would be no light. I mean, other than really far away stars. It's the center of our solar system, and because of its gravity, it causes the movement of the planets in the elliptical orbit, causing change in temperatures, which can allow more stability. Also, if the sun didn't exist, we wouldn't have any food, because the sun light goes down, hits the ground, the plants take that light, stuff happens, it turns into energy, animals eat that, transfer of energy, animals eat that, transfer of energy, we eat the animals, transfer of energy. Everything originated, all our food, we technically, all we're eating is plants, technically. That's where the energy is coming from anyways. Now, five interesting facts. It's 17. 99.68% of all mass in the solar system is the sun alone. That gives you a sense of 
how small we are. I mean, take Jupiter. Jupiter is way bigger than us. Yet the sun is nearly all of the mass in the solar system. We're microscopic. Okay, so, also, the heat and energy as mentioned before is caused by nuclear fusion, and I think that's how nuclear power plants work, but I'm not sure. I'm no expert on power plants. The sun is the closest thing that we have to a perfect sphere. It's a bit elliptical, but it's otherwise a perfect sphere, a naturally occurring perfect sphere. Now, we're orbiting around the sun, you probably know that. But did you know that the sun is orbiting around the Milky Way? Yes, we're spinning around something that's spinning, so we're going really fast. In fact, the sun in its orbit is going 220 kilometers per second. We're going really fast. Really, really fast. Now, earlier I mentioned that it's going to go kaboom, and it's going to shrink down into a white dwarf. When it shrinks down into a white dwarf, it'll become the size of Earth. Yes, that's how small it's going to get. That's the size of a white dwarf. Really small. Now, it takes eight minutes for the light to get from the sun to the Earth. That's, that's a relatively long time considering light. The sun rotates opposite to the Earth. The Earth rotates east to west. The sun rotates west to east. The temperature inside the sun can reach 15 million degrees Celsius. Now Celsius uses a different variation of numbers. So converted into Fahrenheit, that's only 27 million 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Our sun is categorized as a yellow dwarf star. Uh, because it's emitting light, like pure light, it appears white to our eyes. Uh, the sun is composed of 70% hydrogen, 28% helium, 2% everything else in existence. Because the sun actually has like everything in existence in it as a gas. So yeah, if we could get into it, gold, diamonds, coal, that's where Santa is getting all his gold from. 109 Earths would fit on the surface of the sun. Uh, now I mentioned earlier the magnetic field. Something else that makes it really weird is that every 11 years, it gets so tangled up that it suddenly resets and flips. So the north becomes south and south becomes north. That actually happens. Uh, the sun rotates fully, it spins fully, once every 25 to 26 days. The exact amount is 25.38 days, Earth days. Uh, okay, so, to, to emulate the amount of energy that the sun is producing every second, you'd have to blow up 100 billion tons of dynamite every second to match that energy. That's a lot of energy. That's a lot of fiery ball of death. And our last interesting fact. The gravity on the sun is 28 times that of Earth. Yes. That's that. Finally, I got this done okay. Thank you all for watching. Um, like, subscribe, and give me a good grade if you're my teacher, please. Yeah. So it, it took me forever to actually get this done because of one thing after another after another. So, yeah. Like, subscribe, like, comment. Enjoy the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Kind of, kind of dumb to tell you to enjoy the video after you've watched the video. Anyways. Hadou. Or however it's said, French word.